out in the Gulf of Alaska catching Copper River King Salmon, the rarest, most expensive salmon in the entire world. Alaskan salmon has slowly become the favorite salmon amongst chefs and restaurants. And in the category of Alaskan salmon, the fish coming from Copper River are considered the best and the fattiest. In order to understand why people say it's the best, you have to understand the salmon spawning process. Salmon are actually born in freshwater at high elevations where they spend a few years before swimming down into the ocean where they live for two to seven years depending on species. When they decide it's time to have babies, they swim up to 300 miles upstream in search of their birthplace. In preparation for their athletic journey, they stop eating and rely entirely on their fat reserves, which means the longer the distance they have to travel, the more fat they store. So the reason Copper River fish are touted as the best is because their journey home is said to be the longest. This is where Alaskan fishermen come in. They are intercepting these fish as they head home to spawn. That is when they are fattiest and at their highest value. There are two main styles of catching salmon in Alaska. Early in the season, they use gill nets, which is a gentler method for the higher priced sockeyes and king salmon. Later in the season, they use seine nets, which actually uses second boat to encircle fish and catch way more in bulk. So today we're at Copper River fishing with Kyle Lee, a fisherman who has started a distribution business where he uses a network of fishermen, a processing plant, and flash freezing techniques to get the highest quality salmon he can to chefs and home consumers alike. So this is maybe a ridiculous question, but why don't we just like go right to the mouth of the Copper River and then net and just trap them off, stop them off from going in? That's a, it's a great question. But the reason why we can't do that is because we want to give the fish a fair chance. So fish and game, they set boundaries for us. So we can't fish that high up because you're right, if we just went to the mouth and just shut it off, nothing would get by us right. and the fish don't have a fair chance. And so that's why we're restricted to certain areas of where we can and can't fish. Part of the game now is finding the places where there's going to be tons of fish like that are forced to pass by you. Yeah, yeah, they're forced into this, you know, more narrow channel. From here, we're gonna pull up to the beach. Uh, once I hit the sand, I'll give you the nod, then you're gonna throw the buoy um, on the shoreline. Aye, aye, Captain. This is called the lead line, which is at the bottom of the net? Yep. All right, so this, this is top of the net, bottom of the net. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So throughout the net, we have corks that float and the lead line so at the bottom, so it spreads. Okay. Yep. That one's good, just so it's barely in the water. You're gonna hold this, and when I tell you to, you're gonna throw it. Throw it, throw it? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you know when. The goal here is to throw the buoy as close to the beach without actually landing on the beach, because that would cut away any chance for the fish to escape and be a fish and game violation. Can I help it? Yep, just like that, just pull it out. Perfect, good. Whoa, crazy, what's that water doing? It's crazy, it pulls it out away from the net faster too. The challenge with setting the net is getting it out as quickly as possible, as straight as possible. When I first started, I had a hard time doing was, uh, you know, being able to throw the buoy out and set the net out in a, you know, fast enough to maintain the shape. Like right now, it's a really nice day, so you don't have a lot of current. When the tide is ripping, you have to be really fast. Otherwise, by the time you're done setting your net, you're already so out of shape, and then you got to pick up and redo it. And it's just a lot of waste of time. Now we're just constantly watching, like. Just pay, te pay attention to the corks. Like when a fish hits, you know, it'll like start bobbing like crazy. So that's how we know like, okay, there's fish coming our way or like there's fish in this area. So now I guess we just watch. Yeah, you just watch. Seal. And so that's what you gotta be careful of because when you do, you know, catch like one fish, those seals will come up and they'll pick your net. I mean, we're all, everyone out here is trying to catch fish, including the seals and sea lions. So what do, what do you typically do if you're here just waiting? Just wait and watch? Watching the net. Do you really just watch, you watch this net for like an hour? Non-stop, all day. You know, if you see if you see a group of fish hit, depending on the situation, but usually they run in groups, right? And if you see one fish hit, we would untie, we'd detach from this net, and then we'd run our boat down the line, down the net, and so it scares the rest of the school into the net. And so something like that, just paying attention makes a huge difference, because that can mean from like catching two or three fish to a school of 20. With no luck, after about an hour, we decided to pick the net and head to deeper waters. Some days you get them, some days you don't. We ended up moving the boat and trying out three different spots. And by the time we pulled the net out of the last one, hope had almost entirely run out. Things weren't looking good though. The tide was rising and none of the other fishermen in the area had caught anything. If he can't get a bunch of fish, then clearly they weren't out here to be caught. We decided to give one more final spot a try. 
I've realized that the secret to fishing is just ruthless optimism. Wow. So if you had, like, let's say you were. Was that a seal? I don't think so. Okay, so we'll, yeah, we'll run the net. Oh, uh, we're gonna detach and we'll, we'll run the net. Okay, so we think we saw something over there. So yeah. you're just dropping the net down here. Yep, so it holds its shape and then we're gonna try to. Uh, you think that was a fish too, right? Yeah, definitely something. You guys good? So now you kind of got to wait for it to calm down a little bit before you can start reading them again? Yeah. Well, usually if you run them in, you'd be able to tell it'd be bobbing pretty aggressively. It was a light, it felt, it was definitely a tail. It was like a light tail. Dude, I can't imagine. This is so cool. Boom, there, look, in the corner. There he is, we got him. Yeah. Wait, okay, so. See, that's right in the hook, exactly like we talked about. So we scared him, but he felt the net, so he ran all the way down, and because we had that hook, he got stuck in the corner. And you see it? See how the corks are bobbing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy <laughs> That's cool. But that's just one fish, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if you hadn't shuffled over, you probably wouldn't have gotten him, right? Probably not. You can grab the buoy, you're gonna pull it up and clip this carabiner into okay. the net. Okay, got it. You got it? So we'll take the buoy off. Get under it, get under it. Okay, good, okay. It's a red. And now what? Still got one. All right, nice. Yeah, it's a nice red. We didn't get skunked, okay. We didn't get skunked. We didn't get skunked. All right, so the next part, to pick the net, the proper way to do it is you start at the cork line yeah. and you shuffle. And so you take like one mash at a time until it slowly you find the fish. Okay. But like, it just keeps it organized so you're not more tangled. So like, you just shuffle till you find the fish. Yep. And then now that most of his body's out, you take it yep, like that, so he's dangled. Yeah. And when you shimmy, it, it brings it all the way up. It okay. shims it up his body. And then what do we do? You pop a gill like this. Yeah. And then we let him bleed out. Bleed out. It's really important that the fish are properly slush. You know, you don't want to put them directly on ice. You know, you see that a lot, but the temperature difference is too great. You know, because like one side of the fish is directly on the ice where the internal is not, and it'll cause gaping in the meat. So that's when you start to lose quality. And that's why it's so important for the fishermen to take care of it um, so that, you know, the end product when the consumer gets it is in. From a commercial fishing perspective, this was a huge bust of a day. The cost of the fuel and resources just to get out to the fishing zone is more than $1,000. But for our purposes, it was really cool to see the processes these fishermen go through to preserve the quality of the fish. We're back at Cordova Harbor. We probably don't need the crane, so I just wanted to see how the kind of commercial process works. So go ahead, open the hatch and put it to the side. Okay. Yep, and then, yeah, clip in those, yeah, those handles, and you got one more, yeah. Now armed with our one fish, we're going to the processing facility to see how these fish get cleaned and sent out. All right, we're at uh, 60 North. This is your processing facility or the one that you hire to yeah, process yeah. your fish. Yep. They're going through a load of black cod right now and then we're gonna see the then we're gonna see some of your commercial salmon come through. Yeah, exactly. Oh, here yeah. we go. Oh my gosh, what's happening? This is a half tote of cod right now. Because this facility only processes one fish at once, we had to wait for them to get through this big load of black cod. Black cod is processed using a machine that splits it in half. The bones are then cleaned by hand, it's portioned, and then vacuum packed. Finally, once they were done the black cod, they turn the facility over and get ready for salmon. This happened to be an order that was going out through Kyle's company, Alaskan Salmon. The salmon is all processed by hand. It is sliced, cleaned, portioned, and vacuum packed, just like the cod. The tricky part of this stage is getting the salmon and cod processed as quickly as possible after it comes off the boat. So it can be flash frozen right away to protect all of its freshness. It felt like the only way to end the day would be to take our single sockeye salmon that we caught and bring it over to a friend's house to grill it up and eat it. Oh my God. Mm. That's so good. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing me out, showing me the operations. Hope you catch a few more fish next time you go out on your own. Absolutely. It was our pleasure to have you. Thank you.